Hello everyone. So this is a discussion regarding book value per share. Book value per share measures the amount of each share would receive assuming the entity is liquidated and its assets are sold and its liabilities are settled exactly at the amounts reported on the statement of financial position. Ayan, may nakita tayong error dito. Let's just edit it real quick. Here we go. When there's only one class of shares, the formula for the computation of book value per share is as follows. So yung total shareholders equity natin, commonly, pinaprioritize natin i-allocate si preference shares tapos yung natira kay ordinary shares. Then we just divide it by their corresponding number of shares outstanding and that would be the book value per share. And take note, ano, that under the computation of book value per share, as compared to earnings per share, ang book value per share natin, dinidivide natin siya sa number of shares outstanding at year end. Hindi natin siya ina-average. For preference shareholders' equity, the following are guidelines when computing for PSE. Allocate the preference shareholders' equity, any liquidation value. Ayan. So kung may liquidation value natin, i-allocate natin siya. Kung wala, automatic na we allocate the aggregate par value. If the preference shares are cumulative, allocate all dividends in arrears. Pero kung non-cumulative, allocate the current year dividend only if it is in arrears. And if there are no dividends in arrears, no dividends are allocated to either cumulative or non-cumulative preference shares. Very straightforward. No? And may paalala dito that for purposes of book value per share computation, subscription receivable is not deducted from total shareholders' equity. So if you want to solve along with me, then you can just download our Hadoop uh, file as well as the practice file in the description below this video. So we have here our example. Ayan. So meron tayong five cases dito. Let's start with the first one. Preference and then ordinary and then total. So the total shareholders' equity is amounting to 10 million. Sa ating preferred share, unahin muna natin si preferred, no? So 6 million na allocate sa ating preferred share. And then, yung ating dividend, since non-cumulative siya sa first case, non-cumulative, non-participating, we just deduct the current year dividend, whether it's declared or not. Just allocate the current year. So that's 6 million times 10%. So yung remaining amount, everything would go to our ordinary shares. So our total allocation between preferred shares and ordinary shares would be as follows. And when we divide it now by their corresponding number of shares, si preferred shares 30,000, si ordinary share 20,000, this would be their corresponding book value per share. 120 for preferred, 170 for ordinary. Now, let's just quickly go over what if it's the other way around, na cumulative naman siya. Notice that I'll just highlight the difference in solution for a quicker discussion. Ang kaibahan lang sa cumulative, itong current year preferred dividend natin, would be for the number of years in total na hindi tayo nag-declare. So ito, sinabi niya, dividends are in arrears for four years. Ini-imply niyan, pati yung current year. no? So four years. Four years worth of preferred dividend. So hindi lang times 10%, pero multiplied by four years. As such, mas lumaki yung na-allocate sa preferred. So yung remaining amount, naka-allocate kay ordinary. So the totals is 8.4 and 1.6 again dividing by their number of number of shares preferred and ordinary at year end. That's why we have a revised book value per share for both shares. So that's it for cumulative and non-cumulative. Anong point of difference? Ito. Okay. Let's drag this down a little bit. And now let's focus on the participation. Huh? So paano kapag non-cumulative pero participating siya. So once again, we have preferred ordinary and total. So the total shareholders equity is 10 million. 
And in terms of our aggregate R values, notice how it's different this time. So preferred, that would be 6 million. So ordinary, that would be 400,000. So in total, meron na tayong na allocate na 6.4. On top of that, since fully participating tayo, we allocate their corresponding dividends for preferred and ordinary. So si preferred, 6M times 10%, we allocate the same rate to ordinary. So 400K times 10%. So now we got their dividends and their participation. Ang ganyan na pattern. Ano? So the balance, ito yung remaining ano, na ipaparticipate natin. So 10 million minus 6.4 minus 600 minus 40,000. So ang balance natin ay 2,960,000 that will be participated between TS and OS. Kagaya ng ating discussion kanina sa preferred dividends, our participation would be based on their aggregate par values. Ano? So ang basis natin is not just the 6 million or not the 6.6 6 and 440, but it's just 6 million and then 400,000. So for preference shares, that would be 2,960,000 multiplied by 6 million out of 6.4 million. Ito na, 6 million out of 6.4. And then for ordinary shares, that would be 2.96 million multiplied by 0.4 divided by 6.4. Pwede rin no, kung ayaw natin ng 0.6 thousand out of 6.4. Ayan. And then 400 out of 6.4. Para mas less overwhelming na tignan. 2,960,000 times 6,000 out of 6,400. 2,960,000 times 400 out of 6,400. All right. So, the total equity as allocated between your preferred and ordinary shares would be as follows. Oops. 9,375 and 65. We divide it by the number of shares at the end of the period. 30,000 and 20,000, and this would be their corresponding book value per share. 312.5 and 31.25. So, nang kailangan natin tandaan dito? Step 1, allocate the share capital between preferred and ordinary. Step 2, allocate their dividends including the same percentage for ordinary shares. And step 3, the remaining amount would be participated on the basis of their par values na aggregate. And as usual, kung gagawin natin si cumulative and participating, almost the same, except for the fact that for our dividends, we will multiply this four years. Matatakpan to ha, kaya please tandaan natin na 4 years ito. Ayan. So, times 4. And notice na yung ating remaining balance for participation is kukonti. Kasi lalaki yung marireceive na preferred dividends. Right? 2.4 million. And for our balance for participation, mag-iiba na. No? This would now be 1.16 million multiplied by their corresponding par values. Let's actually put that as a reference. Ayan. 1.16 times 6,000 out of 6,4. 1.16 times 6 times 400 out of 6,4. And so their totals would be 9,487,500 and 512,500 when we divide it by their number of shares. The book value per share for both the preference shares and ordinary shares would be 316.25 and 25.63. And that concludes our discussion for book value per share. No? Well, in general, kasi meron pa tayong liquidation value. No? But 
again, balikan muna natin before we go to the final example of liquidation value. Kapag cumulative versus non-cumulative, nakamultiply ng dividends in arrears. Ano? Pag participating, once again, allocate mo muna si share capital, allocate mo yung dividend ng same rate sa preferred share at ordinary shares, and then the balance would be allocated based on their par value. And that would be their book value per share. Okay. <clears throat> so, ito naman. Cumulative participating liquidation value of 240. Okay, so what if this time it's cumulative participating and liquidation value is 240? Pero ito, ang treatment natin dito sa example letter E is whether it's participating or non-participating. Commonly kasi pag liquidation value, hindi na siya participating eh. Pero usually pag ganito, pampalito lang talaga yung participating. Kasi ang, ang logic ng liquidation value ay yung marireceive ng preferred share is up to 240 on top of their dividends. So, Yun na yung participation niya. Nakalimit siya up to 240. Kaya naman, when we do this, ayan. Pagay natin dito, case E. Cumulative, non or participating, parehas lang. Liquidation value 240. And of course, I want you to focus on the difference in terms of the treatment. Okay, so yung ating dividends dito, if you remember, naka four years to, no? Ayan. Ito lang. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin dito, two options. Pwede mo siyang idiretsyo. Preference liquidation value. Actually, ito nang advice ko na idiretsyo mo na lang. 200. So, 300. 30,000 shares. Times 240. Ganyan. No? And then, itong ating ordinary shares, it would still be based on the share capital. Siyempre, yung dividends, it would still be based on the share capital. Careful, no? Hindi siya based sa liquidation value. Based pa rin siya sa ating share capital. And again, times 4 years, kung cumulative, times 1 year only kapag non-cumulative. And wala nang balance for participation, even if it's said na participating siya. Kasi nakuha na ni preferred share yung ating liquidation value. So ibig sabihin, the rest would go to, the seed value would go to your ordinary shares. Which is magkaano. 5,160,000. So, alisin na natin tong participation kasi nakamit na nga niya yung ating liquidation value. And everything would go here to your ordinary share. As such, equity as allocated would be 9.6 and 5.16. Parang may mali, no? Would it really add up? Okay, so it's not. No. So 10 million minus 7.6 minus 2.4 minus 4. There we go. That's better. So ito lang. No? So wala na tayong residual. In fact, nagkulang tayo. So the, I think hindi ko rin ito in-include sa situate nyo. No? So kasi susopra siya. Ayan. So ang gagawin natin dito would be ito. No? Kung real problem to, babawasan mo to hanggang sa mag-zero out lang. Pero kung hindi siya ma-zero out, ang gagawin natin dito ay yung ating preferred shares would be limited. So babagawin na lang natin tong liquidation value. No? Let's try a lower one. Let's just say na yung liquidation value natin 210 instead of 240. So 210. Ayan. Ayan. Mas maganda. Okay. So yun ha. 
edit na lang natin yung problem para maging valid. Liquidation value is 210. There we go. So, again, paalala lang yung dividends natin is based on par value pa rin, even if we have a different liquidation value. So, yung liquidation value, yun yung magiging substitute ng ating share capital. No? Sir, paano kapag may share premium? No? Tapos, kapag may share premium, lalagay mo lang siya dito, share premium dito, and then share premium dito. Pero kung may liquidation value, itong 6.3 is both the substitute for your share capital and the share premium. Okay? So, that concludes our discussion for book value per share. So, ulitin lang natin. As a recap, kapag non-cumulative, i-allocate mo muna si preference share capital, preference share premium. Kapag non-cumulative, current year dividend. Kapag cumulative, cumulative number of years. And then for pag participating, once again, bit ulitin natin, allocate each share capital, allocate each is, uh, share premium, and then allocate their dividends using the preferred rate, and the balance will be for participation. And remember, divide it by the number of shares at year end, not the average. So in our next video, we will focus on earnings per share. See you everyone on our next video. Bye!